to get really into it because uh, Brad actively has COVID right now, right, Brad? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, if everybody leaves this room without being able to taste this liquid, <laughs> then they have COVID too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, yeah, so we're going to talk about COVID a little bit. Now, this is a fun one uh, because we always put together notes before this to help us stay a little organized and we let brad uh take the reins on this one and mm. and put the notes in and i have to say i'm very excited to get further in this because some of these are like so unheard of in my little bubble that nice. i really am excited to see where this goes Good. but uh you know right out of the gate i just have to say that um you know i got covid and i guess we're going to discuss that right brad like what it is and whatever so i know that for the longest time i didn't think i could get it and then i got sick one day I don't know if has everybody here tested quote unquote uh, positive. What are we where are we at? I think I've got my COVID two story. Times. I've definitely got two times where I tested and uh, where and they I both got tested and they yeah, were positive. Yeah. And then I got it just before the just before the shutdown I had it. But I didn't test for it and I didn't even know what it was at the time. Mm. Never got it. Never. Never. Okay. And Brad, I think you're in that same boat, right? Officially, yeah, I've never gotten it. Yeah. So that's interesting. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Until now. Until, yeah. <laughs> until right now. And now he's going to start yeah, until I've given it. all of us. <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right. So, Brad, you kind of put these notes together. I'd love to have you just kind of start off and take us for the prelude of what you were thinking. So you kind of started the, yeah. the whole conversation off with, like, flu season, which I looked into a little bit as well. So what's the, what's that all about flu season? Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of this stuff is just built off of uh, preconceived notions that were wrong to begin with too. So flu season is a perfect place to start. So, uh, last time you had flu, how did you handle it? Did you notify the, uh, how did I put it? The national flu census hotline? I did not. I sat on the couch and tried not to die for two days and yeah. then it was cool. Yeah. Did you, did you even flu, flu talk to a doctor? Pretty hard. So there, there were a couple of years that I actually took flu vaccines and, and I was okay those years. So I guess I got, I lucked out because they have what, like the three different flu, flu, uh, there's three different strains and they only vaccinate for one per year. Well, they, yeah, they Something like change like it based, yeah. so appa- allegedly based on seasonality. Yeah, so yeah. I had it a couple of years where I, I took the vaccine uh, for the flu and didn't get it a couple of years. And then other years I've had it and it's been really terrible where I had it for like a week straight or, or so. But, you know, it's like anything, you get yeah, better. So mainly the thing is that though we don't, we don't really report to any no. uh, centralized no, authority re- reporting somebody anything, has anybody. flu. But we all hear mm-hmm. about flu season. We all hear flu is on the rise. Well, how do we know this? Or is this just a narrative? So this is a, another narrative that we've kind of been suffering yeah, under for a while. Yeah, they come out like, what, like October, November, they start with the flu? Yeah, the and who knows? Maybe they, they kick that narrative off as soon as they know, like, the next uh, Tamiflu is going to be I do tend available. to get sick with it whenever they think that it's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that maybe that's like a, Whether a psychosomatic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but what's weird is that after, after COVID, I didn't get sick for, like, two years. Yeah, me either. Actually, you know what's really funny? You're kind of mentioning this, Brad. I had no idea that they tested for flu the exact same way they test for COVID, like the nasal swab until my wife was sick one time convinced she had COVID. She did one of those drive throughs at like a Kaiser facility. And they said, Oh, we're going to test you for the flu and for COVID in the same drive through. And then he did two different nose swabs. And I was like, I didn't know they, that was like how they did that. They did not. Um, that is a, a narrative based on the like initial COVID tests were delayed because they were going to combine it with the flu. There was uh, supposedly a bad flu strain around November to January mm. 2019 to January 2020. Which may have been like what ran through our office too. Remember, like everybody yeah. kind of got sick like that October November. But yeah, yeah they, they yeah. did not do PCR testing for uh, the flu. Right. And the concept of PCR testing for a virus is uh, patently false. Well, it's new, right? It's something new that they uh, no, they, they did it with, with no, they AIDS. Did it oh, mm-hmm. and that's how Arthur Ooh. Ashe right uh, assumed he had AIDS. And took AZT and died from AZT, which we will get into yeah. much further in this one. <laughs> but then, you know, that was the basic. Maybe next episode. The basic kickoff is <laughs> uh, that's a Fauci flu season right itself has mm-hmm. kind of been this uh, um, fraud that's been put on us since we've been kids, and so we have this mindset coming into it, right? So we're we're predisposed to thinking of these like centralized authorities being able to predict and counter uh, viruses. So then uh, I want to talk about uh, September 2019. I think September 18th, 2019, the repo market. Mm -hmm. You guys know what the repo market is? No. Well, do you guys know what the 2008 financial crisis is? Sure. Yeah, that was the repo market. So uh, overnight lending. Oh, okay. So like real estate. Overnight. Well, overnight lending. Cars. So real estate kind of precipitated a whole bunch of things, but it eventually, the the final Jenga is when the repo market coughs up blood. And so if you needed cash, 
you're a, let's say you're a dry cleaner you don't clean it on premises you take the customer's clothes and they don't even pay for it but you send it out to a service well you got to pay that service to clean that and then you expect payment back later when the customer comes to pick it up right well to um, hold you over, you need some immediate cash, and that's how a lot of businesses run on larger scales, right? So they'll they'll trade uh, on the repo market, maybe some treasuries, for a low rate uh, to get cash overnight, and they'll just have this nightly rate. Oh, that's they'll interesting. Just keep I actually in worked for a couple of companies that they worked for with. Um uh, I forget what the, they have a word for it, but um, it, it wasn't necessarily repo markets, but basically, it's you can. Um, you can basically trade your receivables for instant cash. So the, they'll basically hold on to your debt and then... It's almost like a business payday loan kind of... Exactly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, effectively, yeah. And it's like most of the businesses in the country run off of factoring, it. That's why A factoring company. Mm. And that's why in uh, 2008, they called it the credit desk. When the credit desk froze, that's when uh, you know George W. Bush was crying and uh, Hank Paulson was on his knees and all that stuff, right? So that was 2008. Well, it happened again. Because they basically just kicked the can down the road. And this is about as far as they could get. And this is the last Jenga again. And so it's September 2019, uh, September well, 18th, 2019. Well, wasn't there a period, though, that um, after the 2008 crash, they, they created a bunch of laws to stop it from happening again. But then they re- ended up, like, repealing the laws as years went by. So basically, Those, like, up to 2011, they were basically making laws to try to stop this from happening again. Or make it impossible for it to happen again. And then... Slowly but surely, they were kind of repealing them all back, and and then we kind of ended up in the same situation again. Well, the repo market still needed to happen; it needs needs to exist regardless. But outside of that, the make the banks hold more capital, basically, so that they don't all hit the repo market at the same time or something like that. And ostensibly, okay, so in two thousand eight, September eighteenth, uh, two thousand nineteen, the repo market went to ten percent. So that basically is the two thousand eight financial crisis all over again. The response, though, was the Fed started putting in $110 billion a night into the repo, repo market, just dumping cash in. Just, you know, um, it's basically, you can think of it as units of blood on the body. And they just keep shoving that money in so that uh, people could pull it out and survive day to day to day until CARES People Act, being companies. Right. Uh, yeah, companies. Right. Until the CARES Act. Where they mm. part of the CARES Act was they dumped uh, I think a half a trillion dollars all at once, mm. and then they still continue to do nightly, um, you know, units of blood to keep the body going. So um, that um, directly precedes uh, everything that happened in the uh, uh, COVID uh, narrative. And a really great I wanted to call out this George Gammon uh, episode. I don't know if we have that link up, but. Anyhow, George Gammon has a, a, a on YouTube, he has an episode called uh, The Repo Market, or he has a whole series on The Repo Market, but if you get the first one, he explains it perfectly. It's before it's before anybody point. knew COVID was coming, and uh, you could tell that um, we were going to have to have something, whether it was a war or something. We are going to have to have something as a parallel construction to kind of cover up how badly we'd blown everything and the fact that we'd, we're still um, in a financial crisis. Okay, yeah, we'll see if we can pull that up here. Now, who is George so, Gammon? Oh, he's just a YouTuber. I, I was actually, I, don't, I discovered him because I was looking at the repo market and I was trying to find somebody to talk about it, and nobody was talking about it. So that's how I discovered him. I've kind of been watching him ever since. He's, he's, um, I also like to say it's so great that Brad's losing his voice and he's got to do the most talking. This <laughs> I episode. know. That's <laughs> okay. We can, so we can take it over. Cruelty. I forgot to add another mic oh, for this one. Got it. Well, okay, oh, so for the, we're, we're okay, out. We the don't video. have to watch it. But yeah. But I just wanted to call that out. Everybody can go look That's it up. My fault. So yeah, it's okay, Dave. Um, we'll talk about this off mic. <laughs> <laughs> Deal with this situation it's later. Like, I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Your mic's not live either. <laughs> so uh, I just uh, really quickly before you mm-hmm. get too far into the next steps, I did want to talk about the the flu season thing. I know it's a little bit back, but I did sure, find sure. this super interesting. So I printed the uh, official CDC flu season influenza statistics every single year. You know they release. Um, how many estimated people, how many medical visits there are, how many hospitalizations, and the number of deaths. Can you guess what years are completely missing? <laughs> so 2020, 2021. That's it. Those 2022. ones. No, 2021 and 2022 are on there with uh, uh, significantly lower estimate numbers than anything else. But Interesting. Uh, 2017, 2018, 2018, 2019, everything's kind of following a general curve. 2019 to 2020, you have an estimated 25,000 deaths in the U.S. And then you have a complete gap from 2020 to 2021. And then 2021 to 2022 
is estimated. I guess they still wait to count. I don't know. So is uh, number of COVID the cure for the flu? Well, so <laughs> so then this categorization is the cure. For if the flu. if you look up what they say, their their claim is basically, uh, you know, the the fact that we uh, weren't interacting with each other, that there was social distancing, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> the official narrative is the reason why there's so little flu that there is uh, not even enough to report on it. Right. So or you the can hospitals were incentivized not to. Not to put anything down other than COVID. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, and I think we have our own, like, just within our space here of employees, there's a there's a few situations where people were in the hospital for something completely unrelated to and didn't even have nor get diagnosed for COVID, but walked out of that hospital with a $0 bill, not even their insurance hit, because the hospital essentially classified it as, like, potential COVID-like care. Yeah. It had quite literally nothing. I think you know exactly what we're talking about. Like literally had nothing to do with it. And this individual was able to walk out with nothing, not even their insurance being dinged and not even a copay because the hospital said, Oh, we're just going to basically put it like under COVID and just bill it under that. Yeah. I mean, all of us have gone through these last three years without having to pay a cent for any of this stuff. Right. It's nice. Right. Not up front. (laughs) Not Not up front. front. Yeah. Yeah. We're all paying for it. Yeah. 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 But I did. I did find the the flu. (laughs) The flu piece was very interesting. I mean, obviously, you know, I appreciate they stick to the narrative and say, hey, you know, the reason that no flu came like no one got flu is because uh, no one was around each other. But I think later (laughs) on, we'll probably talk about we we kind of pops that, that, though, which is which is so funny because like, how are people getting COVID, though? Right. Exactly. (laughs) So. So the whole issue with COVID spreading was we were too close and we were around each other. But then because we weren't around each other, no one got the flu. It's like, well, you got to make your mind. Well, you got to be further away for COVID. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Co- COVID, <laughs> COVID happens in a very select window of space. The flu. Six different. feet. It's got to be six feet. Right. Yeah, but the flu, the flu is like a foot, you know? So yeah. you're like, I'm solid. I'm good. <laughs> what kind of popped that, though, is that there's like no death from heart disease at that time, too. Right. A deaths so. for all case mortality spike up after covid yeah. before covid yeah there's like this weird just flat line of cause of death yeah so well, you have and to it's mo- mainly hospitals trying to stay open so they just say everything's covid yeah get that in order get to that keep, money. keep their employees also even heart disease working yes yeah. yeah. anything, yeah. anything. so you get hit by a bus it's covid yeah oh, also test, test it after the, like, get shot COVID. also the, the yeah. third yeah. leading the killer, killer the covid bullet <laughs> third leading killer is medical error Right. So if nobody's going to the hospital, that's a third of us. <laughs> that's a third of our deaths that don't <laughs> yeah. have to happen. We're all safe by not going to the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're officially safer by not going to see a medical professional. Sorry, so I just wanted to do a little tangent cool, there. Cool. Yeah. Um, so then, then well, the next... Well, does bring up an interesting point of, like, mm. is, is the flu season manufactured? Right. Well, so Which is, uh, that's like one of the first, um, like, reels you'll see of all the newscasters everywhere mm-hmm. at the same time saying, it's flu season again, you know, and that whole, like, wild morning zoo, I heard it's flu season this morning, you know, like, yeah. and it's just a mind. <laughs> morning DJ it's, voice. Yeah, it's yeah, just brainwashing it. <laughs> on, on uh, popular media. That's all it is. Yeah, so I do find it, so in my own personal life, I've never had a flu vaccine, which I think my sister-in-law wants to strangle me for because she's like a... Wait, you're all, you had never had what? I've never had a flu vaccine. Oh, no. flu, oh flu vaccine. Ever. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and my, s- my sister-in-law is uh, like, you know, I think she's on Booster 25 right now. But anyways, so uh, I have gotten it probably as many times as she has and had almost identical symptoms. So it doesn't, at least in my own personal experience, it seems to make little to no difference. And also, if we're talking about the flu, just, you know, this is kind of a different topic, but just in general, like Spanish flu, for example, which is, you know, well-known, uh, huge yeah, the pandem- killer, pandemic. Basically the last big pandemic. Uh, a hundred-year um, difference. Yeah. A hundred-year yeah. difference. You know what the main cause of death was during the uh, swine flu pandemic, the Spanish flu pandemic? Yeah, you know bacterial. what killed everybody? bacterial infections it had nothing to do with actually getting the flu it had everything to do with the fact that you had untreated upper respiratory bacterial infections that just went completely ignored and in some were cases they, uh, were they correlating it to the spanish flu though well, that so they have made their immune systems weaker in order they could be and there's also there's also argument that potentially because it's an upper respiratory bacterial infection by wearing a cloth mask on your face you could be continuing to add to that bacterial right. infection so yeah, you're not allowing the bacteria to get out 
you're basically spreading it back into your right. own system. So there's arguments that could be made there too. And anyways, different, probably mm -hmm. a different topic, but still interesting. Still interesting. Yeah, no, yeah. There's definitely plenty to wonder about the flu if we're even going to start talking about COVID. Yeah. Well, you so, just need to follow superheroes. You know, they always have the bottom half open. <laughs> exactly. That's it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody is recognizable from the nose down. Yeah, right. <laughs> put it, um, you put I some heavy eye makeup on. I love <laughs> seeing those in... Like when I would go places, you know, the advertising because I lived downtown at the time. And you say wear your mask, and they have like Batman and fucking oh <laughs> Superman, clear like and the just like right. mask. characters who don't wear their mask at all. <laughs> yes. I'm like be a superhero, wear your mask today. I'm like this isn't gonna do anything. Yeah, I still love like the pictures of like Portland where people were wearing like astronaut helmets. You know, have you seen those where they were literally I, doing that? I remember going because I would go out to shop and everything like that. I lived downtown, so you know it's you know gentrified in some areas. Going to like the Whole Foods or no, I went into a Rouse one time, and these people are straight up wearing astronaut like or, or like bio, bio suits. Jeez. That's amazing. like the whole thing. Or 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 this is this is funny to me. They had the the the, the fishbowl helmet. Uh, oh, that guy. With the two <laughs> and, 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 and no, the, and everything. And then the, like the, the little thing, the little, little fan. <laughs> <laughs> on the side, but he's wearing like all summered out like he's still wearing his summer clothes along with his wife or his girlfriend or whatever but wait isn't it just, exactly the same isn't it just pumping air from yeah. outside yeah. into your helmet yeah, 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 what yeah, an yeah. idiot it's <laughs> <laughs> amazing <laughs> okay so okay so the next one in the prelude is uh um event 201 oh, are we yeah. all aware oh, of event 201 oh, yeah. i printed their exact call to action because i love it so much so um, Brad, if you don't mind, just see, save your voice a little bit. I can yeah, talk a little bit about yeah, Event 201. <laughs> so uh, Event 201 was this uh, global pandemic exercise that was done um, on October 18th, 2019, which is a wild timeline. Even if you, whether or not you have a conspiracy theory whatsoever about COVID or not, the timeline on that is insane. October 18th. 2019 just, just about one month after the repo market coughs up blood and just about a month before you start really hearing like solid reports of mm -hmm. covid in china and people mm -hmm. starting to freak out and reports mm -hmm. of it entering other... i never heard of this actually so event oh, 201 yeah, yeah so yeah, um it's it, a good one. if you pull this one up uh, actually you can actually find their official website it's still still up i would oh, like I to, um, to i would link. i would like to say that it was sponsored by john hopkins the world economic forum and the bill and melinda gates foundation so just in case you're wondering who the sweet sponsors of that is. All right. So essentially the whole thing is uh, all these professionals got together and they tried to come up with like, you know, how would we respond to a, how should we respond to a, a potential pandemic? How do we make sure that we're responding correctly and we're not completely collapsing the internet? And how do we deal with what happens and the outcomes? It's good timing. It's good timing, right? Thank goodness. Looks like a party there. Yeah, right? right. Look at all the little, little disco dots. ball. <laughs> <laughs> disco. Hey. Global <laughs> pandemic experience. Yeah. They should just change that to experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be so, yeah, it really does look exactly like a little party. I, yeah, yeah, I printed it's a it disco out. ball. That's right. So um, uh, if you scroll up, Dave, and you go to um, somewhere on here, where is this? I printed it out, but I mean, I can just read from it. But somewhere on here, they actually have like the official call to action and the recommendations on it. Where is it? I don't know what all this other BS is. Don't jump around too much. Um, all right. yeah. well, here's all the professionals. Oh, here it is. Oh, Download okay. the recommendations. There you go. This is where I found it. It's this little footnote. Cool. This is exactly what I have in front of me too. All right, great. So in general, the points are pretty like straightforward. I mean, they're whatever. So number one, governments, organizations, and businesses should plan now for how essential corporate capabilities will be utilized during a large scale pandemic. It basically, it just goes into like, you know, if we talk about working from home. No, no. What it actually kind of uh, alludes to is, um, you know, if we shut everything down, we'll essentially collapse the, the entire world trade and, and like the all socioeconomic like right. foundations will completely collapse if we just stop working. Um, so that's a bad idea, which obviously that, you know, clearly no one took that recommendation. Yeah. Number two, industrial uh, industry, national governments and international organizations should work together to enhance the internationally held stockpiles of medical countermeasures. So basically, uh, Hey, you know, most of these countries don't make their own medications anymore. Um, you should make sure that people can get what they need and that we're stocked up just in case, which again, we didn't really see. So in fact, uh, this whole shutdown made us realize that 
like three, we were three quarters. Incredibly un- unprepared yeah, for Yeah, uh, th- three quarters to seven eighths of almost all of our drugs are made in China. In fact, um, part of the reason that uh, Dave personally is having trouble re- uh, paying attention right now is there's a uh, world shortage of Adderall. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Told you, Sudafed. <laughs> <laughs> we can just get you some like meth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, Brad just learned that real Sudafed versus fake Sudafed, so, yeah. so Brad's going to get on that real Sudafed life here yeah, in a minute. In my class action lawsuit. <laughs> That's it. Tru- he needs trucker meth to get around. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so number one, number two, basically like making sure that there's a stockpile, right? Making sure people can get what they need. Number three, countries, international organizations, and global transportation companies should work together to maintain travel and trade during severe pandemic. So, I mean, you know, most of these are kind of things you should just do anyways, right? Right. It like is like make sure you have supplies. Make sure you can you can transport sure. things from one place to another. I mean, these these seem like uh, you shouldn't need a special report to know that. Right. You need to have. Like well, that's medicine not, if that's you not get what sick. it's about, though. Yeah, it's it, it's kind of vaguely just the the other point. But I mean, is that the gist of the points? You can actually like, watch it. It's actually on YouTube. You yeah. can see the whole, the whole exercise. Thing. Three three and a half hours. And it's all based around censorship and collusion. Yeah, and we'll get we'll get okay. to that. It gets further on the recommendation. Where does so it tell you to hide under your desk? <laughs> <laughs> so oh, no, that's uh, <laughs> that was during when the Ukraine war started. That's yeah. when that that's started. it. That's <laughs> how you protect yourself from a nuke. So number four, which I specifically highlighted, governments should provide more resources and support for the development and surge manufacturing of vaccines, therapeutics, and diagnostics that will be needed during a severe pandemic. So is surge manufacturing mean quick manufacturing? Well, so is what that you, the idea? What you have to remember is the traditional route to get anything approved requires testing, efficacy, um, large-scale studies. It takes years to get drugs, 10 years to get a drug developed. So just increasing your manufacturing of vaccines, assuming it's an approved vaccine, which I'm not going to get into the details of approved versus unapproved. We we can get to that later. Yeah, but basically what it's saying is you should be ready to ramp up production. The thing is, if you don't actually have an already existing therapeutic or vaccine or even a diagnostic there's no point in ramping up development because you have nothing to treat it, which is kind of right. what we saw in COVID. They said, oh, there's no therapeutic or no existing drug that can be used. Therefore, the only one that you can do is the vaccine, which is why we ramped up production. Yeah. So, so they're saying you should have, you should be able to start producing quickly, even though you don't really know what the pandemic's going to be. Yeah, be, be ready but to double does, your production. I, I guess I could kind of see that. Like, um, even though you don't necessarily have it, when you do have it, you want to be ready to start pumping it out really fast. I guess it all depends on, on like what it is, right? right? So that's again kind of like a uh, illusion, or can they kind of allude to a thought? Like make sure you're ready, make sure you can ramp up. Okay, whatever. Number five. Well, something that America actually used to be really good at. Well, like, we used to actually you know, like, make it ourselves. Right. Well, like yeah. World War II era, you know, when everybody had to switch over to making weapons and, mm-hmm. and tanks and all that kind of crap, like, we'd, that was a pretty quick switch. Yeah, what, GM made the trucks, Ford made the planes. Right. Number five, global businesses should recognize the economic burden of pandemics and fight for stronger preparedness. Now, that seems kind of, like, vague. So what I highlighted were the last couple of sentences. Mm-hmm. While governments and public health authorities serve as the first line of defense against fast-moving outbreaks, their efforts are chronically underfunded and lack sustained support global business leaders should play a far more dynamic (laughs) role as advocates with a stake in stronger uh, pandemic preparedness. Also known as fascism. So yeah, it it feels like, what are you, uh, what are you wanting them to prepare for? So, so before I'm just thinking of like pre pandemic, pre COVID pandemic, more dynamic role as advocate. Well, this sounds like what is a private business going to do in a pandemic preparedness though? Right. But this sounds like Bill Gates saying like, you should put me in charge of this. Well, (laughs) <laughs> it's kind of what it all of this. Right, a global business leader should play a far more that. dynamic role. It sounds like he's advocating for himself to be um, a, have a stronger role when these things kind of happen. So he funds all of this, yeah. Right. Right. Uh, yeah, that's you know what's kind of interesting about it. It's like, it's hey, you should you should look to guys like me to help you when, right. when these things happen. So number six, international organizations should prioritize reducing economic impacts uh, to of endemics and pandemics. So the, again, the title basically says nothing. But again, in the last few sentences, the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, regional development banks, and national governments, foundations, and others should explore ways to increase the amount and availability of funds in a pandemic and ensure that they can be flexibly used where needed. Very useful when there is no more money. So very <laughs> useful. Give us money and make sure we can use it however we <laughs> want. Now, number seven, this is the one that is I highlighted. It's amazing. Now, what you do have to remember before we go over what this particular note is, is this is 2019. 
there is already talks of this type of verbiage for social media and censorship because you, you have to remember this is Trump in office and this is already just about three years into his term. So, you know, everybody's losing their mind saying you need to censor people online. But number seven, governments and the private sector should assign a greater priority to developing methods to combat mis and disinformation prior to the next pandemic response. Prior to the next pandemic response. It's literally fascism. <laughs> so. Yeah some of the details they talk about here, um, you need to develop nimble approaches to countering misinformation. This will require developing the ability to flood media with fast, accurate, and consistent information. National public health agencies should work in close collaboration with the World Health Organization to create the capability to rapidly develop and release consistent health messages. Media companies should commit to ensuring that authoritative messaging are prioritized and that false messages are suppressed, including through the use of technology. Yeah, so uh, right right there against the First Amendment. So yeah, we've already uh, um, found out right about um, Facebook and uh, Twitter and how right. the government yeah. was yeah. dictating how the sure. how they should function. So right? what so they're well, basically and, uh, I think YouTube also and yep. and all, all of them. YouTube, yeah. 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 Right. All the social so essentially, what they're recommending is. is unless the World Health Organization says that it's an approved message, it is therefore mis or disinformation and uh, companies have an obligation. Right. What's well, essentially to saying if there's an emergency, we seize power. If yeah, if there's a until, pandemic, until the world, we say it's okay again, right? If, which if, is yeah, can't and have that. and again, again, this is like the the prequels in Star Wars, <laughs> right? And <laughs> it's, <laughs> everything everything relates back to that. <laughs> and again, they don't even say they don't even say that during <clears throat> the pandemic you should make sure you're well, getting they said ready. Before exactly, yeah. they're saying. You need to have it ready so that as soon as a pandemic happens, you are already you already have all the tools in place to start shutting people down when it doesn't follow the official narrative. And, and in one of our prior podcasts, we had learned that uh, the Patriot Act was suspended. Yes. Yeah. So we, we briefly talked about it. So if we look it up. Um, there was an extension to the Patriot Act. The extension of the Patriot Act, I believe, expired. March. Just after the first start of the lockdown, so we'll have to look that up. Yeah. It's going to have to take some digging. Yeah, a little so, bit. so this event two hundred one. So, uh, what is what does this mean? Is this an official document, or is this just a bunch of suggestions from it's some like rich a, assholes? It's like a war gaming or like yeah. uh, think tanking, yeah. right? Yeah. And it but it doesn't. Have, it's not an authoritative document. There's no. I there's, guess you have to. There's you have no to, laws that are like oh, we coming can, we straight can out. We follow of this. back to it. It's just it, it it involves a novel coronavirus being released and how these mm -hmm. um, Davos level people should handle. It, oh, it no, involves right. fascism. But it's, it's basically just a, a big suggestion, though, right? That's, yeah, but that's here, about it, here's what you have right? to remember: oh, while it is. it is a large suggestion, the people involved with this are the World Health Organization, the World Economic Forum the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So while it's not technically government entities in the sense of like, it's not the federal government saying this is now a law, it is people that pump insane amounts of money into all of these companies that would implement these. Therefore, having these recommendations are more like a, uh, it's like if your boss tells you to do something and it's kind of a joke, but you also know like, well, you could also fire me, so I should probably just do it. Like that's kind of what they're saying. So. It's not being enforced, but yeah. it's being. I just enforced. wanted to make clear: it's not, this wasn't like a sure, you know, you must do this now. Right. I mean, they are saying you must do this now, but it doesn't have any author well, we real could, authority I'll behind it. Actually, revisit it later. I don't want to just like spoil it. Sure. I'll, I'll revisit it later. Okay. Okay. Uh, so what we talked about is we pulled up so, the date here. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. March tenth, twenty twenty. There was a proposed bill to re reauthorize the Patriot Act. Um, it was needed for renewal by March fifteenth. Um, or it would expire, and Donald Trump threatened to veto the bill. The House of Representatives issued an uh, indefinite postponement of the vote to pass the Senate uh, version of the bill. As of December 2020, the Patriot Act remains expired. So just about, uh, and we looked up the dates, so it was within like a week of the um, actual wow. Patriot Act expiring. You have uh, the first like official U.S. COVID lockdown, which is like March 10th or something like March that. March 12th. March 12th, there you yeah, go. So yeah, within 12th. three days... Right. You have the official lockdown and the March Patriot Act expires. There it is. Yeah. March 12, 2020. Very well. You have uh, restrictions on uh, travel and everything, so, uh, the stay at home order, whatever. Two weeks to flatten that curve. And then, um, you know, then three days later, the Patriot Act expires. Oh, it was so amazing. In two weeks, we were free. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And so then the um, last part of the prelude there, um, December 2019. 
Uh, so part of the deal that China struck with the Great mm. Britain and then turning over Hong Kong was that they were going to um, allow them to have elections. And uh, so the Chinese Commun Communist Party put forward an entirely communist panel of Weird. electors. What? And so Hong Kong That's began strange. to riot. They were in the streets. Uh, you know, there was famous videos of like, <sighs> China is asshole. You know, you remember that one? <laughs> so they also had bricks. I thought that was interesting. They yeah. had bricks. Um, I don't know where the bricks came from. Oh, and they were parked out and yeah. just left on the side. Oh, that's yeah. right, yeah. So the yeah, guy they dropped had, him off at midnight out of his no, truck. That's weird, though, because that happened later here. Yeah, it they, happens. they had a pretty <laughs> novel way of using it, too. They, they stacked him who's, and created like a little brick like, company? Arc de Triomphe <laughs> yeah. with them. I just have to say that I think oh, that stone. there might be some money in the brick-making business. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, too? These these guys are on it. Like They, they took the, the event 201, and they're like, let's do that, but with bricks and riots. Yeah. Like, those guys are always ready. That's what you're talking they about. They always drop them yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah, they had a kind of novel way of doing that because, you know, that's, this would stop like, the Let's tanks. make little stone hinges. <laughs> well, it's so easy to just pick that up and do that first chuck, you know what I'm saying? Like, you back them up, and then you can grab the others, yeah. you know? So, <laughs> great. And so then, uh, um, yeah, those. so end of December, China institutes lockdowns because of the... The woo, rioting? The Wu flu. No, right? Oh, no. Flu. Yeah. The Wu flu. The flu. flu. And, and so... Um, <laughs> And that's so a, that's a great China the is riots asshole. were effectively shut down because they were all locked up in their I only said it that way because the I is capitalized. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just have to say that as, as much as this got shut down, my absolute favorite, like Wu flu is hilarious. My favorite way still to this day that I ever heard it described, I think was a Trump quote. He said Kung flu. <laughs> is he the best? Kung flu. I know. I, I was that like, one. oh my God. I can't believe he just said that on live, like national television. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And, and so, okay, we can just move into the official narrative then, right? Because okay. I think it's just funny because, like, then after he said kung flu, then it became racist. And now you had to talk about it as, like, the official SARS-CoV-2, which name? Well, they changed the name, like, a bunch of times. Right. Novel yeah. coronavirus, uh, yeah. all this stuff. Even though they named most flus after the place where they come from. Right. Spanish flu. And and yet they Somehow still, not they still yeah. wanted to pin it on wet markets. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, we'll get to but that, right? But kung flu is racist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kung flu is hilarious. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. I imagine whoever wrote that for him, if he didn't come up with that originally, was like, I freaking got it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So really quickly, before we move off the Hong Kong riots, it is super interesting because um, everybody, everybody here knows the history of Hong Kong, right? Hong Kong, as part of China, was kind of its own thing. It was a, a British like British owned, basically, property for years. And right. then it, it, it had... I mean, if you look up just about anything up until 2020, when it was basically reabsorbed by China, Hong Kong was almost always treated as like its own country. If you looked at economics, if you looked at income, if you looked at like Jackie uh, Chan, yeah, <laughs> Jackie Chan. <laughs> if you looked at any any sort of like world metrics of even like, um, I think it even measured like uh, freedom levels in Hong Kong, freedom level wise, just in terms of like your ability Zero. vote and stuff. Hong Kong, yeah. <laughs> Hong Kong was mm -hmm. allegedly freer than many countries. You can argue that it was probably just propaganda, but either way, like they treated it as a different thing and then it just got reabsorbed. So it is really unfortunate that that sort of just went by the wayside and now mm. we'll see what happens with Taiwan, but I guess that's a totally other podcast as well. But very yeah. interesting. You just absorb things and then, you know, you kill a bunch of people and you say, oh, I don't know what happened. <laughs> no, that's us now. So, yeah, you wanted to get to the official narrative here, yeah, which so I, I think, think is interesting. We, we can do that. Yeah, so yeah, wet markets, sure. which, um, okay, prior, prior to COVID, wet markets were known as the cleanest market because it got washed out in the morning. They set up their food. Mm -hmm. Then they took their food down and washed it out. And when was the last time you went to Ralph's and they had cleaned out the produce aisle that millions of people have over the years just put brand new produce on top of germ right. after germ after germ yeah yeah so well think about markets any, are anywhere you clean. go like do you think they're cleaning out the soda fountains on a regular do you think yeah they're <laughs> seriously <laughs> no, i'll stop <laughs> I, in and out does i know yeah, uh, okay maybe ice machines maybe the one <laughs> you go to <laughs> ice machines are historically like the dirtiest oh, yeah. thing uh, in a restaurant because uh, they never get cleaned they never get cleaned i right. know for a fact that mccafes are pure so stop <laughs> 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 pure spit <or laughs> oh, stop stop yeah, stop, they're, stop. They're, they're filled with vaccine <laughs> pure, pure loogie from the the person i, that I need my sugar-free vanilla stop <laughs> that's gross that's just a bath hold on <laughs> You don't really drink sugar-free McCafes, do you? 
Oh, come on. That's, <laughs> that's my guilty pleasure. I just want to say you're just drinking a science experiment. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry, we go are, ahead. We are it's sugar-free. If you have anything from McDonald's, you're eating or drinking an experiment. <laughs> sugar-free means it's some crazy chemicals to taste sweet. Anyways, this is a totally other argument. <laughs> Splendid. So yeah, I mean, I, I could just uh, this is I thought was funny on 4chan. So I'll just can paraphrase. This is the official narrative. It's still the official narrative. It has not changed despite all the bio lab talk or what. Nobody's officially accepted yeah. bio lab. Despite John Stewart's <laughs> best attempts to be like, it's the Wuhan right. coronavirus laboratory. <laughs> <laughs> so a, s- a snake with a snake virus was eaten by a bat. The bat mutated the snake virus into a bat snake virus. A Chinese man who coincidentally lives next to the only level four bioweapons factory in China happens to eat the only bat with bat snake virus. By some, Dr. Wu. <laughs> by some as yet unexplained <laughs> magic, <laughs> the super mutated, super deadly bat snake virus made the interspecies jump to humans to become the man bat snake virus, oh, probably through the well known bat soup theory of virology. It yeah, only maybe. kills the elderly and the infirm, but the school should be shut down, so two working parent families should drop their kids off at their grandparents. Uh, your private school, cool, your private school, and college tuition of fifty thousand dollars are still necessary, so your children may watch their ch- teachers TikTok. Everybody, use the drive-through window to give us your DNA because we are still in the containment phase, phase one. Except sometimes we're in the delay phase, phase two, or the quarantine entire EU countries phase, phase shrugs. <laughs> That's apparently very EU centric because I don't remember those phases over here. Um, and then gamma radiation maybe mutated the man bat snake virus into a Dow Jones, Hulk. Dow Jones man bat <laughs> snake virus. This has nothing to do with the fact that overnight lending has been broken since last September. Look, squirrel. <laughs> and the best thing you can do is to buy toilet paper, of In course. In large quantities. And okay. finally, orange man bat. Okay, really quickly on your <laughs> toilet paper fact. If anybody here doesn't own uh, a bidet, you're an absolute psycho and you should buy one. That's a complete Agreed. tangent. Agreed. Just get one. Anyways, so the, yeah, so this is this is kind of interesting. So now there's a few, there are a few agencies that are recommending that it should be looked more into of the fact that maybe, maybe there's more to this than it seems. Um, yeah, I think it's uh, the Incredible Hulk got together <laughs> doing experiments with uh, Man Bat from Batman. So right. it's, it's a DC Marvel crossover. Oh yeah, Man yeah, Bat. This is good. <laughs> I this found the good. connection. <laughs> yeah, so this is... This Maybe is Serpentor from G.I. Joe got in there. <laughs> <laughs> so this is pretty wild, but it, so just going into the official narrative a little bit and why they even came up with this to begin with. So before you have the, the first COVID variation that really hits like the zeitgeist is MERS, right? I, I don't mm. think there's one before that, right? It's MERS. There's there was a, a SARS there in was China. China. There was, right, and then that's right. there was well, MERS. So, so looking that's at right. this, this is the this is the U.S.'s official or this is European or this is Chinese? This was, this was on 4chan. It, was, uh, it hit us all at the same time. Ooh, 4chan. So, yeah, so this is just kind of a, <laughs> uh, a, a, a comedic summation, but effectively mm. is still the official narrative. It? Right, yeah. Was, Some, uh, somebody ate a, a bat that somehow had this virus. Yeah, I remember that that definitely remember that story going yep. around. Was it the, there was another, I can't remember that. I mean, you know, it seems, it it's so crazy because it's like a dude, like, either ate or fucked a monkey, and that's how AIDS Thank came you. around. Thank yeah. you, yeah. Well, supposedly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yet it affected women and children in you Africa, were them only or gay <laughs> men in America. <laughs> there, was an, there was another yeah. flu like a few years ago. I can't remember when it was. Maybe it was 20. You thinking about Zika? H1, Zika. H1N1? Yeah. Oh, Zika. Z- Zika. So they know. tried to roll out vaccines for that, too, and it didn't take off. Yeah, no one. Because they tried. They did the, uh, oh, and even in the 70s, too, there was a, a, a flu that was going Swine on. Swine flu. Swine flu. They tried. They trialed the vaccine. Yeah, they tried a, that one again a, in the late nineties. A too, bunch though. of yeah. pe- a bunch of people died during the trials, and they stopped the vaccines completely, and then it went away. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, Zika, and then there was a bird flu. Uh, bird flu, like what That's early two right. thousand? Yeah. 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 Zika is kind of interesting because the way they approached Zika was, and, and even if Zika was real, the chance of infection and issue were very very small. The way it was uh, brought about is, hey, Zika won't really do anything to you, but it will kill your unborn baby. That's mm. basically the way Zika was uh, presented. I don't think it's even going to kill it. I think it was it even was worse. It was going to give it a small head. That's right. Yeah, it was going to give it a small <laughs> head. <laughs> which, oh, my God. Which, okay. they said? Which, Whatever yeah, it yeah, takes. Yeah, How yeah. small? Yes. <laughs> so Zika virus was supposed to basically cause a mutation in the child, in a developing child's like head, which would resort to the result in a smaller head and a smaller hey. brain. And too bad all the Nazi brain. doctors were dead. They would have. We would have had. A they would have been all over this, yeah. right? They would have been like small heads. Give it to the Jews. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, birth defect in which a baby's head is smaller than expected when compared to babies with the same sex and age. Babies with 
microcephaly. And we may want to often have smaller brains that might not have developed properly. So they're going to be like a little bit slower. We may want to be investigating Beetlejuice over Zika. (laughs) You guys remember that guy? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So uh, Zika virus infection during pregnancy is a cause of microcephaly, microcephaly. Uh, yeah, look, they even have a CDC page on it. I don't know. Like, did it just randomly go away? So this was the thing, right? It was, you know, scare tactics to be well, like, okay. oh, this could kill I'm, your baby. Here's or another timeline. Zika was coming out before the 2016 election. And oops, the wrong person won. We can't continue with our plan. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, shut it down. <laughs> Can you look up like a Zika <laughs> Nobody virus? got scared. <laughs> rate of infection or infections or something? I don't know when this was, but this is a weird timeline. You're absolutely right. Or just like when was there? Oh, yeah, and see, and so this this plot comes from V for Vendetta, which was written in the eighties, right? And then the movie came out in two thousand six. So somebody was like, you know, what? we should just get a virus and release it, and then we'll oh, even though we don't actually maps. have yeah, a cure like they Where? did in the oh, film, go there. They're yeah. like, you know, we'll just we'll just come up with something and we'll shoot so it up, are shoot you people s- up with it. Are you yeah, sa- sixteen? Are you saying what we should do is blow up the White House? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm saying if you, if you want to know what the future is, just start reading comic books. Go, go back up for me. <laughs> so yeah, 2016 U.S. state local. What's the what is the asterisk on here? Locally acquired cases reported from Florida and Texas. Interesting. Because okay. I think at the time Zika was mainly in like South America. So it America means they're claiming like the United States, but it really it was just Texas and Florida. Why is it only those two states? Well, because I think it was uh, mainly in South America. Because they're usually red and. <laughs> oh, I, mean, I don't know why those <laughs> Yeah, it's, okay. You know, well, George Bush, was Texas, Florida, Jeb Bush, yeah, Florida. Florida, I get so, you. Yeah. I get you. Yeah, yeah the U.S. territory is locally <laughs> acquired, 36,000, and then it just drops off the face of the earth. So what? Interesting. Or you could even make the argument that uh, if you don't do something stupid when you have a potential new virus, it naturally will go away and people will build immunity and everybody's fine. Mm. You could also make that argument. One way or another, you could say, if it's real, the timeline's strange, but... Look at what happened to everything else that we basically went, oh, let's just let it run its yeah. course. They should have threatened small fine. dicks, and then it would have taken off. <laughs> oh, <laughs> every single guy here would have, like, ten shots. They'd be like, I need another one this week. <laughs> yeah, so the official narrative is pretty wild. Um, what is the – I remember looking this up briefly. So you couldn't talk about the fact that somebody, like – or, like, the Chinese eat bats because it was racist, but – that would be like the narrative's way of how it was spread. That was like a brief thing as well. They were where there was a lot of information of like, no, 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 saying Chinese eat bats is racist. We think it came from eating a bat. Like what? Like <laughs> yeah. what? Are, like what's or the? Just like, that it came well, from it, a there was there was a lot too. of confusing right. things at that time because right. because that was the main story. But then yeah, it was like suddenly you can't you can't call it like the you know the Wuhan virus. That's racist. You can't call it the Chinese virus. Racist. You can't call it the kung flu. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you should. Um, but so there were a lot of those things kind of going on all at once. Right. Be, well, and you remember there was a little bit of um, anger towards Asian Americans at the time too. Yeah, there was like the stop Asian hate thing, and because somehow they thought people, you know, in America that were thousands and thousands of miles away from China had yeah. something to do with the if thing that happened in China. Yeah, if you're South Korean, I mean, it's the reason my 85 year old grandmother, who's had 10 strokes, died. Yeah, they're, like, they're attacking like Asians what? that aren't even the right Asians. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's interesting, yeah. even in that sense, but I mean, uh, with the whole bad thing too. I mean, you already have the preconceived, uh, implanted idea for people for the uh, the film Contagion that came out in what 2011, I think it was. Mm-hmm of it having to do mm-hmm. with a bat and a pig. So you have this whole thing in terms of like, and that was people binge watch that entire, or watch that movie constantly when the lockdowns first happened. So you have this whole fear in people kind of going Ace Ventura on Ventura does not like bats? That's like known That's as it. priming. Yeah. yeah. And, and so you have this whole thing of just like in, in people's minds, you know, oh, this has got to be true. Look look at this movie that's supposed to be... It'd be interesting really to look accurate. into that movie because there are, there are movies that like governments get involved in mm-hmm. yeah. trying to so push narratives. I think that one that, that's backing from... Later in the um, outline, we can come to those, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's keep going. Yeah, so... so the detection. Wet markets, really quickly, just uh-huh. because in my own brain, when I heard wet market the first time, I was like... Sounds dirty. Can you look up like a Chinese wet market? Let's see what you can see. My in. picture. Um, oh. Do you see my uh, the posts? Um, yeah, you were so at one. Yeah, yeah. I've, uh, what? I visited China in 2018, I think. I want me to go uh, back scroll there. down. I think. Oh, also, right, we should here. be really clear, Brad. You could also just be a government informant because you're oh, not Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> <Is it here? laughs> oh, did I forget to put it in there? Because oh, it's not in. Yeah, I don't see it. I'm sorry. No, yeah. I guess I don't have uh, it. These no. 
Yeah, so bad. No, so Brad, before we get further on, how do we confirm that you're not just like a Chinese informant? Because <laughs> China is asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Approved. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, Wet man. market China images. Yeah, see now it's just we we animalsmedia.org. That's the most like crazy what is that? We know. animals, bro. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> bro. What is that? It's like a dot org too. It's it like might a be like page. a furry page. Ooh, never mind. Go back, <laughs> click on it. A furry page. Look, there's sixteen hundred and sixty eight wet market China stock photos That's Getty from images. Getty images. Why aren't there sixteen hundred and sixty nine? So it is strange because right out of the gate, there's just the immediate attempt to make them look dirty. I don't know. And this this table's not looking too good. <laughs> but he's in a mask. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> so oh yeah, thank God. That's not a wet market. So yeah, a wet market like is actually on a that street. Looks like a butcher shop. So yeah. I was staying at the Sheraton. Um, uh, where was that? Shanghai. And I just walked around the corner. Go to the, to the World back Economic alley. Forum. Let's see and, where it is. Where's and it? a wet market is set up right along that street. And you know it's it it's like a oh, every one. every Reform. weekend or every day yeah, yeah. thing. So this is allegedly what the World Economic Forum wants you to think a wet market is. That more look more accurate. Uh, I mean, it's not. It's even they have tables like a wet market. They just have bins and they just load the you know unload the bins in their spot on the street. Could it be know? just the one you went to? Where, where in China did you go? Well, to? I went to two. So oh. I went to one in like uh, Beijing on. and one in Shanghai. What is this? An illustration showing the suspected transmission routes of SARS, MERS, and COVID-19 to humans. So you got bat to camel to MERS. You got bat to... Oh, so, yeah. What is that? Some, something good to think about here. Is what is that, that? What is that animal? Um, these are the Batman spike proteins. and then Catwoman. Yeah, yes. Like a cat. Batman, okay. uh, Professor Pig. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Camel. Yeah, Joe what Camel. Is, what, this one? <laughs> is that an anteater? Is that oh, a UCI. Yeah. Yeah. My daughter went to UCI. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. What is that? <laughs> looks like an aardvark. It is yeah, an aardvark. Yeah. yeah. Oh, That's that how looks we like got an anteater. And this is a question mark. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, come on. That's now, the Riddler. And then, this is, uh, and then this is Riddler oh, 2. Yeah. So those so, are the samples they had in the lab. I, that's a different thing. So, we'll get to that. So, for instance, the I remember a lot of the concern was that, um, uh, I can't remember what it's called, SARS-CoV-2, uh, was connecting to the ACE2 receptor. ACE2 receptors. You guys remember all that talk, ACE2 yeah, receptors? Yeah. Okay. None of those animals have ACE2 receptors. You know who has ACE2 receptors? Humans. That's it. So it was a human that bit another and human. There's no ACE2 receptors in the lung. Interesting. Yeah. So this there's is the your, world. Guy with the bin. This is the World Economic <laughs> Forum's a official website. Can you can you He's scroll up again to that, that graph? Oh yeah, yeah, sure. So I, I'm really confused now because now this is seeming like the World Economic yeah, Forum may have a slightly different narrative of how we got oh, COVID um, to. I know what it is. It's the one that's Brad's Rona posts. Brad's I don't know if oh, you know in that the, one. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Uh, oh. Up there. Okay. There you go. Brad using the naming standard. Yes. Um, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it so much. <laughs> you are so welcome. <laughs> I love the name. Oh, you flew JetBlue? Uh, scroll Ooh. down, scroll down. No? Let's see. Uh, remember uh, Ru oh, Rudy, yeah. Rudy Gomer? <laughs> uh, no, that's the mall. Uh, Still going. Yeah, just this idea that. Let me just type in. Is it title? What? I don't know. You've got. You've got. Uh, yeah, wet market maybe. You have basically this giant laboratory uh, well, right. investigating Let's this virus. Right, right, right near here. There it is. Oh yeah. And oh. Yeah, somehow you have the gold to blame market. it on a food. That was market. like right behind the Shanghai. Um, so that's a wet market. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a lot different than the other. I gotta say, those sure. vegetables look great. They do. Oh, yeah. it was amazing. Now there's also like um, some weird kind of eel, and st you know there'd just be a bucket uh -huh. of eels swimming around. I mean, it was a menagerie, but. It also, it is the cleanest market. Hmm. Interesting. So, um, so how many that's, bats were there? Yeah, <laughs> I didn't see any did bats. You, <laughs> did, you <laughs> buy, did you buy a bat? <laughs> I, when I was looking up the wet market thing too, what I was reading is allegedly it's illegal in China for these wet markets to sell live animals. They're not supposed to. I think they made that rule after the supposed right the Wu flu. So. Right. <laughs> Love it so much. What, what is the really quickly before we stray from this? What is the World Economic Forum saying now of SARS-CoV-2? Because in this depiction, well, it looks like from bats and rats. April twenty-nine. Okay, so this is pretty recent, but it shows the bat to an aardvark. Like, what the hell is that? Is that was that what their narrative was? Is that supposed to be like bats were biting these other animals? Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, they're like feeding off of them. <coughs> Human seafood that's selling wild so animals. Cool. Really weird. I've never seen this graphic oh, before. A, that's a badger, not an aardvark, it looks like. There's Whoever. A they badger. F- that doesn't look like a badger. That's no, a badger. I mean, I guess maybe. So kind wait, of an anteater. Wait, are they saying yeah, that? Looks more like wait, an anteater. Are they saying that could have jumped from a bat to a badger? Maybe yeah, they just didn't have like a cool weird. badger icon, so they just used an aardvark one. And then they just made it a little smaller. Okay, nobody will know. Yeah. <laughs> no one knows what an aardvark looks like. Okay, so... Hmm. So what's interesting in this interesting. chart, too, is that my daughter actually has the original... She was a genetics major, so she actually has the original um, set of genetic documents that came out from China. So everybody kind of received secondhand what SARS-CoV-2 is. Mm. They received documents from China. And the do- documents showed... Uh, the origin of the gene sequences and all of them, all, very few of them, like maybe there was only two that was like remote bat. Everything else was like snake. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Are there a lot of snakes in China? Yeah. Oh, okay. A lot of snakes here. <laughs> there are a lot of snakes here. <laughs> maybe they also have COVID. So getting into the detection then, so you've got the official narrative that um, some guy ate a bat, maybe, I don't know, um, and then a bunch of people get sick, don't look at this level four lab that also tests, you know, similar viruses and the multiple times where people got sick. Don't worry about that. Anyways, detection. Well, and remember it was, it was a thing like where, I mean, you'd get shut down on the media if even to yes. suggest that, that it might've come from that lab. A hundred percent. Yeah. It was, it was so bad. It, it was, was so a, wrong. Such real, a crazy deal that all, big people thing. are just theorizing like, hmm, maybe it came from that Wuhan coronavirus lab. It's right. Like, no, <laughs> you're, you're canceled. You're off TV. Nobody will ever listen to you again. There's no way a lab that experiments with coronaviruses could have accidentally released a coronavirus. So I, rem- psycho. Yeah. I, I yeah. remember hearing they did it on purpose. Not an accident. I remember hearing this <laughs> really early on, like when it was everything was just kind of coming out and like people were detecting like, oh, OK, this is what happened. This is the narrative for Dietrich. Somebody, a Chinese spy, got into Fort Dietrich stole a virus that they thought was really deadly that was going to be like world ending type of virus from the united states but what they really took was a decoy that wasn't really that bad oh boy got it back to <laughs> this is like super early this is like in the first like two weeks of this yeah. okay i don't like this, this narrative yeah, 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 yeah tom yeah. cruise came through the roof and he <laughs> yeah right that's how that's suspended like. <laughs> but i mean i don't think that in 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 essence uh like the whole lab theory i think is way more way more believable in that sense of just that might be related to like i believe harvard got caught yeah um, uh, with chinese sending yeah, yep, uh yep. illegally sending yep. files to yep. china for yep, the yep. it's a network between harvard fort detrick uh i think unc chapel hill yeah. there was a, a ralph barrick down there uh and fauci involved in all of that in in this uh work where was with the Wuhan bio lab this? Um, they always seem to have some kind of sneaky hand. They're our first right. test subjects. <laughs> <laughs> Canada's just shutting people down, seeing what happens. How Wasn't come Canada's never around whenever these things happen? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you ever notice you never see Canada and Batman together? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, that that I've never even heard of this before. What is So this is like some... What is this? Harvard University professor and two Chinese nationals charged in three separate China related cases, January 28th, 2020. Whoops. Yeah. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the names here. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Also, the one. Wuhan lab itself had a, like an air conditioning emergency yeah, or something. Wuhan and, University uh, of Technology. And uh, University of Texas um, medical uh, uh, group, I forget, with an UTMB, I think. They went out uh, and handled it for some reason. So they actually ex- uh, uh, sent out a team uh, to help with uh, some type of, um, you know, air conditioning at a bio lab is going to be pretty uh, intense, right? right? Because you'd be releasing all kinds of who knows what. Yeah, you've got air pumping through the whole building, right? Yeah. So, here, so. Here, you, here you go, Brian. Let's see. <laughs> HIV from Fort Dietrich myth a stasi success. Disinformation squared. Yeah. Um, yeah, sorry. Mm. sorry All right. Maybe we okay. should get into detection a little bit, okay. area. So, so I love the. It's almost been an hour. Yeah. <laughs> Has it been? I love the um, the first thing you put was CT scans because I had no idea this was ever an initial way that they were trying to actually prove that you had uh, COVID. I had to look this up, and I was like, "What's he talking about CT scan?" So I Googled it, and sure enough, some of the first initial tests that they were trying to do was doing CT scans on people, and allegedly you could see this white blob that kind of looked like glassy shards in people's lungs and they were going interesting covid here it is yeah chest ct and covid 19. so now they say that you know this is not 
uh, is bullshit. <laughs> yeah, it's complete bullshit. <laughs> but but what's weird is in all these pictures, they're pointing at this thing in your lungs and saying, "That's COVID, <laughs> right there. That's COVID. There Those it is." Those aren't just your lung sacs. So you know, or anything else if they smoked, or if they were around asbestos, or you had a degenerative thing, or or or, mm-hmm. that's COVID, buddy. Yeah. So. Why did you put this on here? Just because you thought it was interesting, Brad? Well, it's the detection is just uh, like showcasing everything, right? It's just yeah. like our first indication of just like the mass miscategorization. They right. they just assumed they have a priori assumption that there is this COVID, uh, this SARS-CoV-2. And then they did something unrelated, which is a CT scan, and then said the results of an unrelated test therefore proves my a priori belief in a SARS-CoV-2. Yeah. Sorry. I, wonder if, Sorry. I wonder if it was more of just like a... You know, they're kind of trying anything since it's an unknown virus. Just mm-hmm. giving benefit of the doubt here. Uh, like, you know, they're, so they're just like, let's do a CT scan, and then and then they find something. Yeah. But, you know, that's so just, PC- just because they're seeing this on a CT scan doesn't mean the other thing. But they're like, you know, it's kind of like when you find a clue that has nothing to do with well, anything. Mm-hmm. At the time, I was reading that it took them about eight hours to run the PCR test. And that was the PCR test takes a little strand of your DNA and then clones it right. like to a trillion times, I believe. Something like that. And so um, it, it's 30, 40 cycles, right? It's 40 cycles that they, they're cloning it. So by the time you're done, you've got like a trillion clones. Uh, and so the process of doing it was so time intensive. They decided, and also remember, I don't know if you guys saw the early early footage out of China, but it was like people bleeding out their eyes mm-hmm. and ears, mm-hmm. you know, and just dropping. falling over yeah. well, and wrapped the, up bodies and stuff f- like that. I remember the first thing I saw was the when they showed all those people with ventilators in an Italian, um, in an Italian hospital. I yeah, know like this one was of the first one some of the, like from this that. was like live leak photo or live leak footage that you would see from China and it would be like you know it would be something out of like the um Dustin Hoffman uh outbreak oh, yeah, movie yeah. like bleeding out the eyes and everything. So making making it out as if it's yeah. way worse so, than this. So so because of the urgency they said we don't have time for it we're just going to do CT scans. And then now we got into our miscategorization. Yeah, this is a this is a good oh, yes. one. So yeah, so you have CT scans and they say no 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 that doesn't work anymore. And then, yeah, so PCR tests are the, the, what everybody thinks of as the gold standard nowadays of uh, testing for COVID and determining if you actually have it. But the, what is this, the inventor of the PCR yeah, test, right? Yeah, Carrie Mullis. So what's really funny is before you even show this, I would just like to show that, like, if you just search for this guy, you were finding some hilarious search results. The top posts all had to basically do with saying why his quote is outdated, oh, yeah. missing context, uninformed. Um, he invented the PCR also, which, test. But he invented it, right? Yeah. Right. So, so, well, the question then is... Did he win a Nobel Prize for it? Uh, or he won one Germany, June 2005? Freelance, yeah, freelance journalism. Hmm. So the thing is, though, is like, did, did he think he was right at the time? Or was he full of shit? Did, he, did who think he was right? Who? I'm sorry. Who are we I'm so, well, I'm saying, I'm saying that we're looking at the PCR inventor. Right? Yeah. Did he, he th- did he think that he was correct? No, he said no, you can't use you it can't to detect. Do it. He says you can't okay. do okay. it. He's saying, okay. he's saying yeah. you cannot do it. Yeah. yeah, and that Fauci doesn't know anything about anything. Okay. So he also he's been saying stated, that since AIDS. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you can't you can't just take something. Fauci believes that you know just you can take something and, and amplify it and test it and you can prove something that something that okay. Isn't there, he's he's saying that's yeah. not not accurate. And he died just before COVID hit. He died in what? 2019. 2019, so strange. a year before COVID happened. Uh, what's also super funny is like this feels like a who is that? Oh, uh, is. Who is that woman that's like going to jail and she's like a psycho? She said probably she allegedly had that inv- uh, invention where you take like a drop of blood and you can test for all that stuff. Katie Holmes, right? Was that her name? Holmes? What, who am I thinking? Katie of? Holmes? Why, uh, like Tom Cruise's ex-wife? No, wrong Holmes. You know who I'm talking about? There was that woman who came Sherlock? up with like a. Yeah, Sherlock Holmes. There's a woman who came up with like a test, a quote unquote test, and she basically said like, "Oh, you can use this one drop." Oh, of you're ther- Theranos. Oh. Ther- Theranos. 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 Yeah. Uh, this Elizabeth. Holmes. Elizabeth Holmes. Holmes. That's yeah. what it is. This feels very much like that when you think about it. Like she's like, "Oh, from one drop of blood, you can do all these tests," and everyone's like, "You can't do that. You need like so many other technical tests, tests for cancer and stuff like that." But yet they're saying the same thing for COVID. You just need one tiny little swab of your DNA and we can test you for this. Like mm-hmm. it has that same vibe to yeah. it. Right. Yep. But what did, what did he officially say? He said, uh, Oh, you had the quote right here with a PCR. If you do it well, you can find almost anything in anybody. If you amplify one single molecule up to something you can really measure, which PCR can do, then there's very few molecules that don't at least one single. So this seems like it's a post about why they work. 
No, no. But he came he's out saying, against it. Yeah, he's saying that's that, why I was getting confused. He's saying that, that one looks like it. For, for instance, the coronavirus has delivered colds and flus Here it is. for thousands of years. We all have coronavirus uh, so uh, saying, genetic anyone sequences can test positive for in our body. Anything with a PCR test. Right. Yeah. It's just depending on if, if you run long enough. And uh, uh, a genetic. Yeah, and, and what are your genetic markers? They're just like a, a collection of letters, right? And by the time you've gone to a trillion clones, you've uh, randomized the letters so much. If you dump uh, Cheerios in a bowl, and it's a big enough bowl, you're going to be able to, you know, see your well, name. You're going to see uh, yeah. the well, you know, kind of prediction like, uh, for the future. Even, even psychologically speaking, right? Like if you keep looking for yeah. illnesses in your body, you're eventually going to find something. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, confirmation if bias. N- yeah, if not just making yourself sick by looking. Somewhere. Oh, yeah, this is a good uh, yeah. chart showing the accuracy. So each cycle, that's something that nobody wanted to talk about oh, was yeah. the cycle threshold. Mm-hmm. So once you start, like, uh, going out towards 36 here, you're, just, you're 34, you're at zero. And how many cycles accuracy. do they do for the COVID? Uh, 40, 40, 45. 40. If it's up here, it shows really you. Yeah, yeah. 40, 40, 40. Yeah. So we have 39, yeah. 50, 45, 40, 45. So it just, it all, it, that's really... That's really what the gauge was for everything of why you were hearing so much about everything is because, oh, and there's an uptick in, in cases. And, it was like, and I kept in, uh, you it's, know. And so sad that this was also used yeah. for AIDS. And oh, so yeah. many people yeah, thought yeah. they had AIDS. Yep. It's so sad. It's, it's the same. It's like what well, we talked yeah. about, Brad. It's the same. Well, maybe we can playbook. get into that in another episode. Too, that's a good There's a, a, some like the similar, horrible shit similar happening playbook. there, too. Yep. Yeah, same, same playbook, same feel. So the PCR, they're running it too much. It's. Bullshit. I want to know who comes up with the cycles for these things. Where they're like, you know, we haven't done that in a while. Let's let's do this. Let's <laughs> release every, another virus. And you know, some, something that's interesting, too. Uh, I'm pretty sure you'll get to it later. But, you know, this is the only thing that I thought of during that time where you can actively see how many people are dying from something mm-hmm. every single day. And they would release the numbers of how many people are dying. And I always thought, like, well, if you did this every any other year that of existence and, and right. reported how many people die each day, people would freak out how many people die every single day. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Just under normal just circumstances. under normal circumstances. Yeah. It, it is a staggering number. So well, you, know, you figure constant you, fear into people. You, you have know? to think like a lot of people have to die because a lot of people are born every day. Well, and even if we they only just slowly the, go up. Yeah. Well, even if they just showed like the number of car car deaths. Yeah. Like people who mm-hmm. die in car accidents every day. Like people would be terrified to drive. Right. But it's it's also about how you're counting too. So they were showing like cases, but or um, positive cases, but they were of the same person. So it was the same person represented multiple times in their numbers, right? Which, what you know, we're... Well, and cases. people who didn't have it, that they were just saying had it. Right. Yeah. So, like, uh, um, oh, let's see what's... I just wanted to see the COVID cases map to see if it still have it open. I'm sure they still have it because we're going to go into lockdown too, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, some of us are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some of the rest of us are going to be like, no. Texas ain't. Yeah. That's it. So you've got just... The PCR test being clearly used incorrectly, right? I mean, too many cycles testing for something that you can't test for viruses. You can't, was never meant you can't to test, test for viral right? infection. Oh Impossible. boy, this is. There we go. I mean, nothing makes it feel more like you're in a. Did you ever play that um that pandemic game on your phone where I you did. like try to make your own global pandemic and oh. kill the whole world? This is a game. It's yeah. a little. It's a, <laughs> well, it was just years ago. Was, well, I played it. Well, I, well, I got times. the pandemic game when this thing started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, on Steam. Uh, so this. Like, looks, let me see. I could probably do better. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe amateurs. And what's a good way to think about this too is a deadly pandemic. That's impossible because it would kill the vector it needs right. to be transmitted. Yeah, so exactly. That's <laughs> that was the whole thing with um MERS, right? So the part of the reason that MERS never got to very large numbers was because MERS basically killed everybody that got it. Maybe that's what happened to the Zika one too. No, it didn't actually kill the person well, at all. Zika's, their heads. Yeah. 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 All their, all their like, heads shrunk and they were too, too embarrassed of, to go outside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, but MERS, MERS was uh, a l- like low level, what they claimed was low level of contagion, high level of death. So basically what they were saying is with MERS, so many people died so fast that it couldn't possibly spread. And therefore, you don't really get a, a huge, the same situation like you're here. But... Yeah, so I guess really what they're playing with is semantics of verbiage, right? So they're saying a global deadly pandemic, which you're absolutely right. It That can't be possible because if it's killing the host, it can't spread, right? You're killing yeah. the host too fast before enough people can get it to keep it going. Yeah, the, the Black Plague was like rats, you know, it was right. like uh, people still get the plague. vermin. People still get the plague today. Yeah. There's a there's an the outbreak of the, the plague. Fleas? It's the fleas on the rats. Yeah. But they have a, you know, they have something to get rid of it if you get the plague. But... 
what they're trying to claim is the number of people that died made it deadly, but the percentage of people that died based on total cases is so low that like just about every other cause of death is higher. Why does China have no deaths? Look at that. That's magical. They don't report it. You know, it's yeah, really funny when I was looking up they're COVID. They're just robots. Reported, uh, when I was looking up reported COVID cases. Controlled by bats. <laughs> yeah. Controlled. When I was looking up reported COVID cases to reported COVID deaths, South Korea or North Korea has the wildest numbers. They have one reported case, but six deaths. I was like, <laughs> come on. Why are we even saying this is hilarious? This guy who had COVID killed six people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This one guy had COVID and then six people fell out of a roof off a roof. Yeah. <laughs> like, fell out a window. <laughs> yeah. Weird. So just ever, all in general, like all these numbers are so crazy. And that, that North Korea thing, I even bring that up because it was like on an official website that said here's the number of covid reported cases and deaths it's like why are we even talking about this like it's so clearly stupid that you're just like you're not even checking yourself anymore you're just like whatever they tell us is real so here we go so this is slightly different this is a little bit different from the one that i found so yeah. so how do they even know what is the are they releasing their numbers a single death was reported to bring a total number of fatalities to 73 where this yeah one? i don't believe that at all either 38 oh. north, 38 parallel. Yeah, you're not going to find much truth out of North Korea. Yeah, well, like, why would they even report it? Oh, yeah, look at number of active cases, daily deaths. I believe that. Yeah. Oh, uh, this is probably similar to their level of food that they give their people. <laughs> mm -hmm. One, one, <laughs> one piece of rice right there. Yeah. You get one. You get one, one, one rice. rice. <laughs> no, I, yeah. I, I'd have to find like what I found, what I was reading, but it was basically like the Crazy. death rate was like 600%. And it's like, that makes sense. That hundred percent makes sense. Anyways. So we have some other points to go over here, Brad, like the who models mm -hmm. and the therapeutics, but I'm wondering if, uh, a part two. yeah, I think before we get too far into that, I think that might be like part two talking about the who models, the therapeutics. Cause that kind of easily leads into like, the fear mongering the, and then we can talk yeah, about into the shutdown. All of the, yeah, all exactly. That. And then we can talk about the, uh, the jab, <laughs> right? Jam. That might be part three. That <laughs> might be part three. <laughs> be. This is a long, well, cause series. you need to, you need to heal from COVID right now. You gotta get <laughs> your, uh, yeah, you know, you gotta, you gotta go get, get your, your I can't taste this uh, <laughs> pH seven water. Oh my gosh. You really need to go get minerals. <laughs> you gotta get your 10th booster. You're not going to be, you're not going to be okay in a couple <laughs> weeks. You know, you guys are asymptomatic by the way. So <laughs> you don't see me freaking out about that. <laughs> we're, yeah. We, we're actually well, the more dangerous. <laughs> 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 All right. I think that's a good way to end part one. So part two, we're going to get into the who models, the therapeutics, the fear, the mandates, the jab, and uh, why Brad loves his COVID vaccinations. Right? <laughs> That's it. Awesome. Anything else to say before we sign off so we could do part two? We'll get to that later. Pay attention to your streaming service and how many HIV commercials there are. <laughs> <laughs> and, right. Oh, Go yeah. Uh, don't believe anything that we said. Look into it for yourself and also uh, get ad blocker for yep. your computer. Like, comment, subscribe. And don't pay your taxes. Goodbye, everybody.